Welcome back to the Sports Medicine Orthopod. My name is Anthony Yu. Folks, if I asked you what the fastest growing sport in America was, you might be surprised to learn that it's pickleball. And joining us today to shed some light on this increasingly popular sport is sponsored pickleballer and Fresno State tennis coach, Calvin Song. Calvin, how you doing? Pretty good, Anthony. Yourself? I'm, I'm not too bad. Full disclosure, I was sick over the weekend. I'm still nursing a bit of a cough. And so if you see me coughing silently, that's because I've muted my audio as to not interrupt our guest. And it's not because I'm passing out or about to throw up. I'm just coughing silently. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I might be sipping from uh, – my fancy the sports medicine orthopod mug which by the way is available for purchase uh at the very reasonable price of five thousand dollars a mug we're doing the big, big baller brand marketing strategy we only got to sell one so uh uh there you go calvin let's start it off with the question on everybody's mind what is pickleball you know the best way to describe pickleball is a shorter version of tennis and ping pong. It's a good combination because you're using a tennis court surface or an indoor gym court surface. Um, and then you also have, kind of have that table tennis score. You know, it seems like they play to 11 in, the, in their games, if not 15 or 21. Um, and in our game, it can games can go up to 11 and 15 as well. Um, so the scoring, the format, is with the table tennis, but a lot of the fundamentals from tennis also merge into pickleball as well. So it's a great combination, but also, you know, there's a lot of badminton players, racquetball players, and pretty much any contact or hand-eye sport is starting to get more and more active with pickleball. So break down the actual sort of dimensions of the game, the equipment, uh, because I hear this a lot. It's a hybrid between tennis, badminton, uh, ping pong, so let's start with, you know, how big is the court? What are we talking here? So the court is actually the same size as a badminton court. And that's where okay. people kind of have that um, resemblance of, to that sport. Um, and the balls are actually very unique because a lot of people will consider them to a wiffle ball, but they're very similar, but also different in many ways, whether it's the construction of the ball and um, the weight of the ball. I always feel like playing wiffle ball, baseball, very light, um, very flexible plastic, when you play with a pickleball, it's actually much harder. Um, there's a, a lot of balls in the market. One of the most popular ones is a DuraFast 40, which you know has indoor balls and outdoor balls. The indoor ball will tend to have greater holes because there's less wind resistance. Hmm. Um, and when you trans, when you go to outside, the balls tend to be a lot smaller. The ball's a lot harder, just so it can be played longer throughout the game. Um, and, you know, going to the paddles, man, these paddles are blowing up. You know, I'm, I'm currently sponsored by Selkirk, and they have a wide range of paddles, and they're typically made out of a, a polycore. It's a little bit, I would say, a harder material, maybe closer to a plastic um, material. I'd say it's, it's pretty thick, um, and they also make them in different thicknesses, and a lot of companies are resorting to different graphite faces, carbon fiber faces, um, you know, ones with more spin, ones with more power. So it's very interesting to see all these companies and these paddles, you know, be created, be prototyped or shipped out to players and, you know, even um, athletes themselves to test them and go through the whole process. So it's very interesting um, to see what these companies are doing with the game. Yeah. And so Selkirk was a new company to me, probably very well known, obviously in the pickleball world, but they, they are a manufacturer of uh, pickleball equipment. Uh, do, do they also do tennis and, and other racket sports or is it? So actually just solely pickleball. Wow. And they actually just came out with their own ball too. And, you know, a lot of these companies are trying to kind of get in the industry. So even a lot of tennis companies now are making pickleball paddles, whether it's Wilson or Babla or Head prints and a new tennis company recently diadem um you know are trying to get into the surge of the pickleball world you know i, I kind of felt these tennis industries were not trying to get into it as much you know they were going to solely stick to their main racket sports but you know with the growth of pickleball to this day everyone is you know testing and marketing and trying to get into this industry whether it's a new paddle or new design and um it, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to see yeah, that's uh, it's it's just exploding in popularity, and then 
it stands to reason that the um, you know the more people interested, uh, there's possibility for revenue, and so uh, you know new innovation, new technology, and uh, you know they 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 all go hand in hand. Um, let's talk about the rules. So I think everybody has a pretty good idea of you know the rules of tennis, ping pong, badminton, pr pretty much the same deal here. You know it's uh, it's a little different because you can only score when you're serving. Okay. Um, and you know, this is kind of one of the longest parts about pickleball is understanding the rules because yeah. each player must let the ball bounce at least one time. So if I serve the ball to you, Anthony, I must let it bounce. And when I hit the ball back to you, you also have to let it bounce. And that eliminates people serving volleying like tennis. Right. Um, and, uh, so that's where kind of the scoring works. You can only score when you're serving um, and you have to let the ball bounce once. Those are pretty much, I would say, the two rules that take the longest. Mm -hmm. um, and also the kitchen. I don't know if you heard about the kitchen. I've heard about that, but please you can't, you describe can't the kitchen to us. Kitchen. <laughs> you know, the kitchen is about 14 feet long um, on both sides. And you can only step in the kitchen when the ball bounces in the kitchen. So... Um, that's when you see the diagram of pickleball court. It's the two front lines that almost resemble a service line to a tennis court. That's called the kitchen line. And that box is very, very tricky. And it's most the, one of the most important parts about pickleball. Um, you know, like I referred to tennis serving volleying, a lot of people would be poaching and stepping right on top of that and to make the game a lot simpler. Yeah. Um, so they established a kitchen and you can't step inside of it. But people, again, this game is changing, I feel like, every day, if not, you know, every minute. Because people are jumping around the kitchen line. They're jumping over the kitchen line. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they're expanding all these ideas and just the three-dimensional part of this game, which is crazy to see. You know, I remember when I first started, I had no idea what this kitchen line was. And I just want to hit the ball hard. I just want yeah. to do tennis instincts <laughs> and get sure. to the ball. And yeah. you know, even, even if you can't maintain balance after the point's over and you fall into the kitchen, you also still lose the point. So even if the ball is bounced two times and I'm, you know, I'm dancing over the line and I my momentum carries me into the pickleball, uh, the kitchen, I therefore lose a point because I didn't maintain stability. So that also I'd probably say those are the top three rules. You know, understand the scoring, understand the receiving part, and the kitchen. You know, once you get comfortable with those top three um, rules, the game becomes very fun. You know, you get you get hooked, and people say there's a pickleball bug that kind of goes around, <laughs> and that's how I personally got it. Yeah, and that's how we met because we have some mutual friends who used to play basketball with me, and now they just play pickleball. All the time. They're like, <laughs> you, you got to meet this dude; he's really cool. Um, yeah, and so you know that kitchen. For the audience, you know, you could pull up a graphic or aerial of a court, but it's kind of the area, it seems, uh, right next to the net, where if in tennis, you would just be right up against the net, ready to uh, volley and, you know, um, you know, hit, hit smashes overhead and things like that. But you, right. you can't really you can't really do that in pickleball. You, you got to stay out of the kitchen, right? Right. You got to stay out of the kitchen. You got to stay out of the kitchen. Number one rule, probably, stay out of the kitchen. Right, right. Uh, one other thing I saw in – this is going to fold into my question to you as a guy who grew up playing tennis and as a professional tennis coach, you know, kind of what did you think about pickleball when it first started? Uh, like, honestly, but it, you you can't serve overhand also is, a, is another thing, right? Like the yeah. initial serve's got to be underhand, right? Yeah. So it has to be underhand and below your waist. And, you know, it's if even if you look up Google uh, pickleball on Google right now about serving, there's different serves. People are spinning the ball with their hands. Uh, one of my good friends, Zane, um, you know, he invented a new serve where he spins the ball off the paddle to create more movement off the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's these pros and, you know, form, uh, a Selkirk athlete who is very well known in the world. His name is Morgan Evans, and he's been spinning the ball with his hand and creating new serves just with his own identity. And that's awesome to see. Um, but my first initial thoughts were, you know, this sports for old people. And I was, first, <laughs> you know, it was crazy because I was first introduced to sport. You know, I first heard about it maybe 2011. My coach, my high school tennis coach and her brother actually went to the national tournament and competed and placed third. Oh, cool. And 
when they came back and told me about it, where, you know, they said I would probably like pickleball and they explained the rules to me. I immediately shut the conversation down. <laughs> I, I, am, I am 17 years old and this sport sounds um, meant for senior citizens. And right, right. From then on, I don't think I touched, I don't think I even played until I turned maybe 25 or 24, whether I was in my mid 20s and um, I was playing for one of my old coaches birthday parties you know he was like turning 40 and the big milestone for him and he decided to have a pickup ball event so i you know attended the event and you know us coaches from tennis have known each other for 15 years sure and all we tried doing was hitting each other and some of us some of them knew how to play and you know it's just like that kind of friendly game where in even in tennis if we were the same people we tried to go after each other yeah but that's when i got hooked i i was the worst one there I did not really understand the kitchen line. I got called on many times, but that my competitive spirit came out and yeah. realized that this was such an intense sport um, and I had to be a part of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, my, my experience in, I'm not a tennis player, um, but my first experience was uh, I was in my fellowship in San Diego and a few Older folks, we'll just say they were over the age of 60, had come in. Um, it was maybe two or three gentlemen. There might have been a lady also, and they come in with some, you know, knee sprains, things of that sort. And they had all played pickleball. And th these weren't people that knew each other. They, you know, I saw these three or four individuals over the course of maybe a month. And after the second or third one came in, I'm like, all right, what what is this pickleball thing? And they're explaining it to me. And I think one even said, you know, it's a game for old people. So then immediately, kind of like you, I'm just like, Okay, conversation over. I will never play the sport unless I'm too debilitated to play basketball anymore. Uh, and and here, here we are, you know, six years later or so, and it's uh, sweeping the nation. So tell, tells you what I know. I also sold Netflix at 1.30. So you know, <laughs> I cannot predict the future at all. You got to um, go back in time. Yeah, exactly, back exactly, exactly, exactly right. Um, so, you know, you, you're, you've been in the tennis game for a long time. Um, you know, we spoke offline. You, you grew up in the Midwest uh you're around a lot of folks uh you know both as a as a coach and as a competitor who play tennis w what has been the general response from the tennis world towards pickleball are, are some kind of like this is an old person's game or has it been pretty receptive and in an embrace of uh this new game yeah no great question i am i am a huge advocate for pickleball and i am I'm not trying to necessarily convert tennis players to be solely pickleball players, but I actually use it as a great coaching resource and a tool because it develops um, actually good feel of the ball, whether it's, you know, off the paddle and just the same motions relate so well to tennis that I'm, I'm talking to tennis coaches and even collegiate players or tennis professionals to play pickleball. And, um, you know, I, I'll tell them the story and I'll tell them the game and, I convince them no matter what, because you may think, I always say, you may think it's an old person sport, but I will show you how it is. Not. Yeah. <laughs> I will change your mind on pickleball, whether it's the dynamics, the speed, the technique. And, um, you know, once these players get hooked, it's just, they just can't stop now. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting requests from even high school friends and tennis friends and or anyone that I know, like, Hey, you know, what paddle should I get? I want to get into pickleball. And, you know, it's, they played it one time and they instantly get hooked, especially tennis players. I feel tennis players, because it can translate so closely to pickleball, you know, it's a sport where they may not have the same movement as they did five years ago, 10 years ago, even, you know, two years ago to play tennis again. And it could be a great even reset of the movement um, back into the tennis court. But, you know, I, I tell a lot of people that they need to be playing the sport just because of the exercise and, it's a forever game. You know, it's, it's so easy to find, it's so easy to continue to play and until, you know, we get to that age over 60, maybe, um, you know, it, it's just a great sport. And I always try to get coaches to play. If, if not, just try at least once. If you don't, then it's completely fine. But I, I do know some people who are totally against it. You know, they're, it's taking up the tennis court space. It's ruining tennis courts. You know, they're putting lines on it. So it's, it's definitely a give or take on who you're speaking to. Yeah, they're purists. Yeah, aka aka, AKA snobs. No, yeah. I, I respect that. Um, 
so, you know, do you apply that encouragement also in your, in your coaching? And so, you know, we should let the audience know you've coached at major universities throughout the United States. And we'll talk about, you know, you actually were uh, undergrad at Iowa State. You're from Iowa, ended up coaching at University of Iowa. We'll kind of get into that later. You know, you burned some bridges, I'm sure, uh, with that choice. Wake Forest and now Fresno State. So you're coaching high-level college athletes. Uh, are, are, do, do you apply the, those – encouragement to get on the pickleball court for the the collegiate athletes as well or or kind of try to tran translate some of those lessons that pickleball might be able to uh uh teach in terms of increasing the skill level or honing those skills on, on tennis yeah no so um i actually tried to even start a pickleball program while i was at the university of iowa because it was such a fast growing sport as we you know we're talking about uh, but also even to talk to my collegiate athletes, I, I do, you know, encourage them to play, yeah. um, whether it's here or back at home or even at a public court with some friends that, you know, I tell them that you can continue to work on your volleys, you can continue to work on your reaction time. Um, and, you know, when they play it, again, I, like I said, they get hooked. And currently at Fresno State, I'm trying to organize a, a day for my girls where they can actually get and play and, you know, I think they're gonna be way confused with the rules, and it's gonna be fun to watch. <laughs> uh, but once they get into it, I can I can definitely see you know tennis players' eyes when you you love the game and you love doubles. Your eyes get so big because it's such a fascinating sport. You know, it, it, it's so there's so much laughs and so many you know fun times and memories. Um, you know, I definitely have been encouraging it to all the schools that I've been at for sure. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting. There's a lot of crossover, it seems, between pickleball and tennis. And you live this kind of not want to say double life, but you you have your feet in both pools, right? You're a coach and player for both tennis and pickleball. What, what are kind of some of the similarities you see as a coach in terms of the training, and, and maybe some of the differences between uh, the two disciplines? So you know, definitely coming from a majority of a tennis background, it's very easy to even use those same materials into pickleball. Um, you know, whether it's a split step, the follow through kind of grips and techniques and swing paths, um, it makes it a lot easier for tennis people to transition into pickleball, but also on the coaching side. So when I um, am coaching pickleball, I actually use, I would probably say 75% from the tennis background that translates well, but also, you know, you have to come up with a pickleball techniques. There's some players, I feel like the biggest thing for tennis players is when they play pickleball against someone who has a unorthodox swing, you know, you never expect it because in tennis, you would never see it. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like all the swings are the same. The contact points are the same and the shots are the same. Yeah. But, you know, one thing I re had to realize in pickleball is that you can get away with the pancake or you can switch hands and oh. you know, do weird things and yeah. do a lot more fake outs. Um, and that's where pickleball has to kind of gain its own identity there with yeah. its own signature moves. And I was like, okay, that ball's going to the forehand. I know exactly where the ball's going next. Mm -hmm. So I'll be ready for it. And it'll just go in a different direction because it pickleball so fast and so short that you're able to manipulate the ball a lot easier with yeah. the different angle of the shot. Um, so then, you know, that kind of covers up the rest, whether it's, you know, its own motion and its own swing path. And so pickball definitely have, has its own shots that sometimes will work in tennis. Um, and sometimes I'm even using pickleball coaching into my tennis coach. I'm like, yeah. How, how can we get away with some unorthodox shots? How can we get away <laughs> with learning how to disguise a shot a lot better? Yeah. In pickleball, you can disguise it very well. And in tennis, you know, can we use those abilities to disguise our, you know, our shot selection or what we're trying to hit a lot sure. better? So there's definitely ideas where I'm trying to bounce around from both worlds. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, I'm kind of one of those coaches who are always looking to you know, explain a shot in a new direction or a new way. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I I would be that guy who would be like, left hand, left hand, left hand, psych, right hand. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you, know, it's, it's crazy, you know, some people will favor their back ends. I, I played some uh, players who will hit the ball across their body with one arm and hit it aside of them versus just normally hitting a backhand. And I, um, 
you know, I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I don't know what, how that's comfortable, and, yeah. but hey, it works for them. So sure, sure. What? Well, why do you think it's gotten to be so gotten to be so popular? You know, it it's just because it's a I would say smaller court space. Um, it doesn't take as long as some other sports. Um, but also it's just so easy to learn. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to see some posts. If you've been following pickleball and tennis, you know, you'll see images of tennis courts being drier than the Sahara desert. <laughs> yeah. Pickleball courts flooded with people, you know, it's just so much easier to learn. I would say tennis and maybe badminton, probably badminton and the other racket sports take a little bit more discipline and such a lot um, more time because of this, the fundamentals. You know, right. it, is, it is very hard for, you know, I say, Anthony, if I give you a tennis lesson, you know, for an hour, we might be able to have a five to 10 ball rally. I'm not, I don't know your tennis background, but, you know, not good. Ball, I, I, I could uh, <laughs> definitely see you having a 20, 30 ball rally right off the bat. It just, it shortens up the learning, um, mm-hmm. the learning growth of the time. And it, you know, it just can be played also so many different ways. You know, you coming from basketball, you might you're going to have a great lower body, and you might be able to be down low and gr- dig a lot of shots out, um, but also have a huge vertical. And, you know, push off of and you know hit more overheads. And you know, everyone can play. It, it's so hard for I'd say maybe a basketball player to go into tennis, but you know, your attributes and abilities are can be used in the pickleball in the instinct. Yeah, you're flattering me. My vertical is like. <laughs> These days, <laughs> I look young, but I'm really an old hey, ass you, man. You, but, look uh, five, you look six five on the camera. Six five on the camera. <laughs> That's right. But uh, you're my favorite guest for saying all that. Um, you know, this is a sports medicine orthopod. So l- let's talk a little sports medicine. You, you know, as, as a coach, you're going to uh, witness your athletes getting injured, whether it's your tennis or pickleball athletes. Uh, you yourself may have experienced. Um, some bumps and bruises along the way. What, what's kind of the injury profile? They're pretty similar between tennis and pickleball. You know, un- unfortunately, yes. And, <laughs> um, you know, it. I would say a lot of, you know, maybe I could list off a few. Is tennis elbow is probably the number one. I would say. Ah, surprising. Um, you know, yeah, <laughs> tennis elbow. It's a thing. It's a real thing. It, it is a real thing, everyone. It is. There's a golfer's elbow too, which there is, is. A different part. So, yeah. um, tennis elbow. You know, I would say it kind of goes into ankles next. Um, you know, there's a lot of same explosive movement that people may tend to roll. Um, you know, there's a lot of shoulder injuries with the range of motion and also just the speed of the shot and you don't have much time to react. So sometimes you can feel a little bit of an impingement yeah. um, on your shoulder after, you know, a couple hours or even a couple months of playing. You know, it also kind of roll into the ACLs and the MCLs and, um you know, even the probably the most unfortunate one is also your head. You know, there's people who, you know, have tripped in the past or fell forward. And, you know, sometimes with the older crowd, you know, I almost recommend not to backpedal so quickly and fast because of that potential instance. And I've seen it a couple yeah. of times. And so that's where that old, my heart always skips a beat when I do see, you know, that kind of potential pre-fall down but they catch themselves sometimes they don't yeah um that'd probably be the most scary one you know it's just um just a balance and core awareness is sometimes very difficult for people yeah yeah and you know for the audience anybody can get tennis elbow right you don't have to have had played tennis to get tennis elbow most of the patients i see with tennis elbow have not been playing tennis but it certainly can be a risk factor for it, that repetitive use. And we do think there is something to do that kind of repetitive motion, whether it's swinging a racket, pickleball, tennis racket, or, hey, you know, something, it, something at work. It could be called pickleball elbow one could day. Could be. Hey, who, who one knows? day, who one, knows? day <laughs> one day. All the tennis purists right now are just giving you the finger. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but these pickleball people are patting my back. Yeah, exactly. Like you're taking our courts, don't take our medical diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, impingement is, um, a shoulder condition that's uh, known by a few different names, but it kind of describes tendonitis of the rotator cuff, uh, which, you know, an overhead athlete with repetitive motion um, can trigger that. Also don't have to be an athlete to get cuff tendonitis, also very common. Um, and then, yeah, for sure, the ankle, knee stuff, you're piv- pivoting, twisting, uh, moving fast, and uh, your ankles and knees are going to be, you know, at risk of, of those types of twisting type injuries. Um 
probably not as common as say our, our football or, or turf athletes, but uh, still, still, still risky um, given, especially how much running and twisting and pivoting you're doing 100%. all the time for the, for those sports. Um, you know, I want to move on. How organized has it become? I mean, I looked back at the history. Pickleball has actually been an evolution for quite some time. I, I think it's now everybody kind of knows about it. Uh, there's articles being written about it uh, every day, it seems. Um, obviously very popular, increasingly so. And we talked about originally, you know, there's companies evolve, coming up with new technology. So what, what are we talking about here? Is there like a professional circuit? Are there, are there tournaments? Uh, what, how, how organized is this thing? You know, since the game has been has grown so much and evolved and so has the professional level um you know there are multiple tours now and there are the ppa and the app tour um, back in the day it was you know your couple of your major tournaments your indian wells your nationals your toc tournament of champions um and you know there's definitely a, a lot more there's a us open you know kind of your grand slams of the yeah. world um, but, you know, it just started a couple of years ago where the APP and the PPA have um, started their own pickleball tours. You know, they're professional touring events where a lot of the top pros will have signed contracts with either or sometimes both. I'm not too sure about that. Um, and they will go play in those events, you know, and now actually starting very soon, there's going to be a major league pickleball. Oh, which holy. and the draft just happened i believe uh maybe a month ago or two weeks ago my my timing's off but you know these players are all brought into texas and they were drafted by team members and so now kind of relating it to basketball a little bit you're getting drafted to be on a team yeah. and you know they have females and males on the team where they're going to be playing their own um events um, and, you know, kind of the tennis world, we ha they have world team tennis where they have, you know, men and women on the same team. They're playing singles, gender singles, gender doubles in a mixed. Um, and that's going to be super exciting because that actually starts next week. Um, but, yeah, there's there's these evolving, you know, tours where they're having a tournament, I feel, you know, maybe at least one or two a month. And, you know, these pros are traveling all over the country to participate and, you know, earn their prize money, earn the glory, um, and also just compete in fans, you know, obviously with the pandemic happening so recently, sure. it's still in it, yeah. um, no one was really allowed to watch. Everything, live streaming has become super popular now. Um, Selkirk actually has their own TV channel that you oh. can download off of, um, you know, Roku, Apple TV, kind of any streaming device that you have, and they will stream pickleball matches onto your TV. Um, Very cool. And, That's know, awesome. It, it's, I, think, I don't know if you knew that, but I did know, not know that. It's on CBS Sports. It's on ESPN three, and it is just peop, there's the demand to even watch these professional athletes play in these tournaments. Now, you as, as a sponsored player, um, you you play with some of these top top athletes, these professionals. Are, are these converted tennis players? Are they just people who had picked up pickleball? Uh, years ago and have just perfected their craft like or do they kind of come from all different backgrounds and flavors you know they i would definitely say they come from all different backgrounds and flavors you know yeah. there are a lot who have played in the tennis grand slams who or were collegiate athletes uh in the tennis world but you know i know some people in the Med midwest who were division three soccer players division one soccer players division yeah. one you know football players and or division three you know whatever sport but definitely a lot of different flavors. Um, and you definitely see some tennis background from, you know, these professional athletes. Um, I would probably say the majority of there's not really, you know, I don't know the exact statistic behind it, but uh, some racket sport in tennis is probably the number one that people come from. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a, his name is Dekel Bar, and he was, uh, I believe he's from Israel and he was a, ATP, you know, professional male tennis player, maybe 400 in the world, and uh -huh. now he's converted to pickleball, and now he's top 10. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I've i gotten the opportunity to play with some of the best in the world, and I currently train with one of the best in the world. Um, and uh, Who's that? Her name is Irina Cherasenko. Uh, she is uh, one of the most, I guess, 
she was number two in singles at one point. She won the U.S. Open last year in singles. Um, you know, she's one of my good friends. And, uh, you know, whenever she's in town, we get together and we train and, you know, we do drills and we play games. And it's uh, it's quite the workout. It's quite the workout. Yeah, yeah. No, it must be. Um, you know, you'd kind of mention this is a sport you can really mix it up, you know, mixed gender, doubles, singles. And I, I imagine – Going back to the fact that, you know, or going back to our original kind of thoughts when we first heard about this game of old people, it's probably stratified. Um, uh, um, you can stratify it amongst age as well. So, uh, my, my thought when I was kind of learning about pickleball is that's probably some of the appeal too. You know, that this is a game I could play with my wife. Um, you know, I don't bring her out to my pickup basketball games because. You know, she'd embarrass me because she's better than me. And, <laughs> and, you know, things, things like, you all the time. Yeah, the, you know, yeah, exactly. exactly <laughs> right. But, but yeah, the, the, this seems like a, a game with a lot of flexibility. Um, that that could be fun. Uh, you know, sort of mixing it up with folks you might not necessarily be, you know, playing competitive sports with or against. Is that how you feel? I, I would definitely, um, I would definitely have to agree with you, Anthony. You know, you can never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, whether it's age, size. You know, whether what clothes are wearing or what pals are playing with, you know, I, I've seen some players who can play amazing with wooden paddles. And I've seen some players who can move faster than lightning. Um, you know, that's why you, I always say you can never judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would definitely continue to say that uh, it's one of those sports where, you know, I even play with my wife. I'll play with my wife's family. I'll play with my little cousins. And it's such a sport. It's just, again, it's so easy to learn that you could teach to anyone in, you know, minutes. Yeah. And so play, you know, yeah. you don't need months or weeks or years or hours. You can play within minutes. And it's just so fun because, you know, when when you kind of see their learning curve and their, their oohs and ahs and excitement of the sport, that's what I always enjoy seeing when I'm coaching and playing. And, you know, sometimes when I play with people at a park, whether they have no idea – you know, who I am or how good I am. I will come in with, you know, tennis shoes and a paddle and a water bottle. Uh, but, uh, you know, for them to kind of get that excitement to play with all these different ages. And, you know, sometimes people always want to play with the young people. Sometimes they want to play with the old people. Sometimes, you know, they want to play with the females and the males. And it's just so fun to see all of the combinations you can have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, for those who may be watching the podcast, or the show or listening to the podcast and are, are thinking about, picking up a pickleball racket for the first time. Uh, uh, if, if they don't have a tennis background, should they be discouraged? Is that, is that a huge advantage to have that? Or is this just a game for uh, anybody of, of all athletic abilities and backgrounds to, to try out? Yeah, it is a game for everyone. Um, and when I mean everyone, you know, I've, I've seen, they have wheelchair pickleball. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not even too sure that many people know about it, but I've seen some, you know, um, wheelchair pickleball and it and it's it's continued to grow and anyone should be playing the sport and everyone should be playing the sport and you know even with your paddle selection i would definitely say try the sport out because there's again there's so many paddles out there mm -hmm. um there's play people that will help you loan one or you know you go to a park and ask to borrow one or even a rec center and ask to borrow one and i'm sure they'll have pickleball paddles and if not it might be listed on the website you know maybe due to covid or what other reasoning but pickleball people are always so welcoming and helpful that i've just given mine out i've sat out and just let them play let beginners play and uh, let newbies play and um i would definitely really recommend if you want to play a sport that you'll have fun and you can play with anyone and everyone and play forever start now you know as of october 27th <laughs> start now you heard it here right now 8 32 right. p.m pacific 8 32 p.m get your butt out there yeah right now calvin thanks so much for joining us this has been really fun uh, it's been very educational for me and i gotta say i i'm i'm interested to play and uh maybe you can take me out and school me a little bit and we'll film it it'll be good tv I, I, have, I have no problem laughing at myself and uh <laughs> <laughs> put on the podcast. Exactly right. I like real um, Anthony. <laughs> that's right. Um, okay, let's finish up with five questions with Calvin Song. All right. So number one, uh, we talked about your love of tennis as a youngster. Who was your favorite tennis player of all time? Roger Federer. Okay. He is the GOAT. And yeah. 
you can message me on Instagram or Twitter and tell me that he's not, but I will, I'll have many points. <laughs> Any chance he'll start playing pickleball? Hey, maybe there's some <laughs> professional players that have been. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to test your knowledge of pickleball history. Why is pickleball called pickleball? So there is, uh, there's a couple theories behind it, but I believe that is true. That there is, there was the owner, her dog was pickle. And so she would always, the dog would always be receiving, uh, fetching balls. This is one of the theories. So they would yell pickle ball. And they would <laughs> go chase it. that's how I originally, you know, first heard yeah, it right. um, and feel like that is a more common one, but I come from coming from a dog's name, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That is one of the two leading theories. And just so all the pickleball fans out there know, I did my research quick history. So 1965 in Washington state, a congressman by the name of Joel Pritchard uh, was hosting a friend named Bill Bell, who was a businessman at his home on Bainbridge Island. They were bored. They had a badminton court. They had ping pong paddles and wiffle ball. Pickleball was born. The next weekend, they had another friend join them by the name of Barney McCallum. He's the one that has said he thinks the pickleball was named after the dog named Pickle. But uh, Pritchard's wife, her name was Joan, uh, she claims that it's because, uh, in quote, the combination of different sports reminded me of the pickle boat and crew. Yes. Where oarsmen were chosen from the leftovers of other bo boats. Um, and so, you know. Who knows? It's it's part of the the mythology of pickleball. Right. You got you got to accept the left or right path and go with it. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Um, okay. Question number three: Is there trash talk on the pickleball court? And if so, can you give us an example? Hundred percent. I think you will experience, it. and you can laugh for you know our friend Alan. I. You know, I, I always trash talk because it's fun. It's light heart. It's very lighthearted. You know, um, I you know sometimes when a ball is called out, um, and sometimes you know some people might think it's in, and they tend to lose the next point. Sometimes you could say, "Oh, ball don't lie." Oh yeah, um, yeah. yeah. You know that one. <laughs> that one, that one yeah. translates to you other know, sports as well. <laughs> sometimes it's always fun to tell people the ball has to go over the net. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Anthony, you might hear some of those when we play. <laughs> are, are, there, are there a lot of like kitchen puns, like stay out of my kitchen, son? Stuff like that. I personally have some of that. I'm more of a kind of, you know, they miss a shot, you know, I'll kind of give them that little heckle feedback right over, right, <laughs> right away. So, all right. So maybe not such a friendly sport after all. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, as we had mentioned, uh, you are from Iowa. Actually, the city where Iowa State is located. Yep. And that's where you did your undergraduate work. Yep. And then afterwards, you ended up going to the University of Iowa, which I can only imagine is completely hated by Iowa State, uh, where you coach tennis and we're working in that area uh, in, in the tennis world. So um, question, when those two schools play each other, who do you root for? That is a very tough question. Um, I definitely root for both teams. You know, I would definitely have to give the edge to Iowa State just because I grew up in that town. Um, I went to school there. My parents have business there. And, and we always have a lot of alumni people from Iowa State. So I would have to give the edge 51-49 to Iowa State. But I definitely root for both. You know, the, the great thing about rooting for both is that they'll have their ups and downs in the years. Yeah. So I can kind of change when I need to, <laughs> you know, Iowa football, Iowa basketball, or I, I, would say basketball, I would say football. So it's very, it's very fun to watch both compete. You got an Iowa state Jersey on underneath your Iowa Jersey. Exactly. Just, like, just in case. Dual fan and I'll sit right on the 50 yard line, <laughs> you know, in a way, neutral zone. <laughs> Follow up question. Are you still allowed back in Ames or? Do you, I am. I was do you get all, sideways looks? <laughs> I was all a trader, so I definitely will wear my Iowa State apparel when I'm back in my hometown. Oh, yeah. and That's smart. Iowa apparel yeah. when I'm back in Iowa City. Yeah. That's like uh, one of my best friends is a San Francisco Giants fan. I'm an Oakland A's fan. And when we go to watch a game together in Oakland, I just say, just please wear an A shirt. Yeah. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't just, it's not worth it. <laughs> I, I, my, wife, my wife is an Iowa fan, and 
I remember, um, the, you know, side story. I bought her a Iowa State Nike zip up jacket. Very nice. Um, I believe she's won it once. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her I was going to convert her. She's going to be a dual fan. You know, it's her favorite color. And um, I believe I kind of, after a few years of dating, she wore it one time for me to, you know, my hometown, Ames, Iowa. And, uh, you know, for, I don't think she ever won it since. I remember the tags were on it for more than two years. The tags were on it for more than two years. So, you know, I think it's finally revealed. It's gone. <laughs> well, gone. yeah. I mean, that one time was just, you know, that was the sign of love right there. That right. Was your, that was a big <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> two times you're asking for too much. <laughs> right. All right. Question number five with Calvin Song, and then we will say goodnight. Where will pickleball be in the next 10 years? I see pickleball definitely being on the main live streams of sports, you know, stations, you know, ESPN one and two, I would, I definitely see more professional players coming in and a lot of young guns are coming in. Um, I think the growth is going to be so big, so big where tournaments are going to be every weekend. Major events are going to be every weekend across the world. You know, I think, there, that it's going to exp expand glo globally, um, which it is right now, but it's going to continue to get bigger across the world. And who knows, you know, pickleball, maybe not in 10 years, but in the future may become a, an Olympic event. You know, I yeah. know it has to go across X amount of countries to get approved, but, you know, once it continues to grow, Hey, Anthony, maybe one day we'll see it in the Olympics. Yeah. And I, you know, uh, I, I led you with that one cause I is exactly where I want, where I wanted you to go. I read, there's quite a bit of controversy at that. A lot of, a lot of differences, opinions. Um, you know, I'm not going to launch an opinion, but Hey, three on three basketball is now an Olympic sport. So. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, I mean, Hey, three on three basketball is even a professional event now, you yeah. know, there are, is it three V three or big three or I know yeah, there's big, kind of a, big three, uh, the ice cube league. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to that because of COVID, but yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, I definitely see more, you know, it, it might be a merge. There might be a merger, you know, there's two kind of separate pickleball events. I would say right yeah. now, if there may continue to grow with more tours or there might be a whole unit, a whole single, you know, tour professional league for the future. You know, I think we'll see um, what happens in the next 10 years, but I know you'll be definitely playing on the tour. After, yeah. after the <laughs> you'll be, you'll get the bug. And I, I, I know that this podcast is going to take you to your next professional career. Oh man. That's a great way to, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to, the, you know, the last thing I was going to say is as soon as DraftKings starts handicapping pickleball events, which may already be happening. Who knows? Then it's, then it's bona fide. That's then, a black then, market. Yeah. Black market better. <laughs> yes. As soon as people start laying wagers on the pickleball matches, then uh, we, we, we know it's, it's, it's in for, uh, for big things. Right. <laughs> All right, Calvin, uh, I really appreciate your time. Super interesting. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, hit subscribe, please. And um, stay tuned for more exciting content. Calvin, thanks again. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. Thanks for tuning in. If you like the show, please subscribe, like, and share. And we love to hear from you. If you have a question about today's show or you, a loved one, or maybe your favorite athlete has sustained a sports medicine injury that you would like to know more about, please reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or email. And stay tuned for more exciting content from the Sports Medicine Orthopod. Thanks again.